Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and I do apologize if you can hear the fan in the background, hope we will not disturb you too much. Just like the last video, it's still boiling hot in here, we don't have air conditioning. But anyway, uh, welcome to a different kind of a video. Today's video is going to be a bit more educational. I asked you guys a while ago if you're interested in seeing a video about science fiction and fantasy. You guys said yes, so here we are today. Today in this video I'm going to be talking about these two genres, fantasy and science fiction, or in short, sci-fi. What exactly are they? What are the differences between them, etc. I will try to make it as concise, as simplified, as short and painless as possible due to some time limitations and patience, both yours and mine. This is going to be the base of the base. However, even if you think that this video is uh, too easy, you know, you already know what's the difference between science fiction and fantasy. Or, um, stay tuned, who knows, maybe I'll be able to tell you something new. And before we get into things, if you do think these things are interesting, then please make sure to like this video, to subscribe to my channel, and to comment down below if you want to see more educational, exploring kind of videos. Before I get started, I do have three important things to mention. Number one, and that I think is the most important thing, you do not have to know how to analyze the work in order to enjoy it. I'm doing this video because I think this is interesting, because you guys want to see it, and because this is YouTube, and I assume that if you're watching this video, you're interested to know what the difference between science fiction and fantasy are, but do not let anyone tell you that you don't get it, or that you can't read a book and enjoy it without knowing exactly which genre it is and how this genre changed through the years and what are the social implications in different cultures and everything. No, if you like a book, just enjoy it. By the way, I will be saying the word book a lot here. This is like a short, easy word for me to say. I will be referring to literature in general. Number two, I have a feeling that a lot of you will be inclined to say in the middle of the video something like, hold on a moment, that's not true. If what you're saying right now is true, then what about this book and this book that does the exact opposite and this author who always does this and that? Guys, relax, okay? Like I said, this video is going to be the basic, oversimplified, really a beginner's guide, okay? Books and genres have been existing for many years, they had a lot of opportunities to change and evolve. You have to learn to walk before you can run and think about it like this, okay? When Quentin Tarantino yeah, uh, is making a rule-breaking film, he doesn't just do whatever he wants, right? He takes certain rules and breaks them and replaces very specific tropes with some specific other tropes in order to make a point, okay? So today we're not going to learn how to do a film like Quentin Tarantino, we're just going to learn about the basic uh, tropes and the rules that he chooses to break, okay? And number three, just a little bit of a background, I'm going to be basing what I'm saying today uh, on the theory of fictional world by Thomas Pavel, on whom I've learned as I was doing my BA in English Lit. Just in case you're wondering where am I coming from, who the hell am I to think that I can tell you something about literature? Okay, let's get actually started, finally. So, Thomas Pavel is a literary theorist, yes, he's still alive, and uh, he's a literary theorist among many other things, and in the 80s he wrote a book where he talks about his literary theory about fictional worlds, and what he basically says there is that every book you read, and like I said, it could be a novel, it could be a short story, even a poem, etc., every work creates a fictional world where the story takes place and as we look in this world where the story occurs it's its relation to our real world to our reality that determines whether it's fantasy science fiction or none of them pavel talks about three kinds of fictional worlds possible world impossible world and improbable world well, let's start by talking about the possible world. Basically, it's just like our own world. If I would have given you a book and told you this really happened, you could have believed me. Now, it doesn't have to be historically accurate, it doesn't have to be a true story, it just has to be theoretically something that you would believe that could have happened in our reality, because 
The reality in the book pretty much looks like our reality. It would be easier to understand as I will be talking about the two other worlds and I really do want to focus on them. So let's move on. Uh, but before I do some famous examples, now I will be mentioning names of books and stories etc. all over the video and I will just make a list below if you're interested. So some famous examples that take place in the possible world that are not science fiction nor fantasy are Catcher in the Rye, this didn't really happen in real life, but could have The Great Gatsby, Child 44, which is actually based somewhat on a true story, but that doesn't matter. Uh, and let's throw in a, a historical novel just for the heck of it, The Other Boleyn Girl, which was also my first YouTube video ever, a review. Not a very good video. Anyway, this is a historical novel. Is it historically accurate? That doesn't really matter. It could have happened, therefore, possible world. Now let's move on to the impossible world. Books that take place in the impossible world cannot really occur in reality. You would never have believed that this thing really happened because unfortunately they have something in them, some element that is totally incompatible to our reality. It's basically break some of uh, physical rule of our reality, like uh, the law of gravity, for example. But really, in short, magic. Every time you see magic in a book, unfortunately, as much as I secretly still wait for my Hogwarts letter, and I think dragons are really cool, it would have been really awesome in real life, these things have never existed in our world and could, unfortunately, never exist in the future. As you can imagine, if a book takes place in an impossible world, it is a fantasy. Let's look at some famous examples. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Harry Potter series, Dracula, and the Narnia series, just to mention a few. Now here is something very interesting. Let's look at another two very famous uh, books. Alice's Adventure in Wonderland and The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. In both of them we have a young girl who lives her life in a normal, regular world, but then she's being transported into this magical land with a lot of very fantastical things that does make the world fantasy. But let's look at the ending. At the end of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Alice wakes up and it turns out that it has all have been a dream. It wasn't real. She spent all that time in our reality. So technically, according to Pavel, when you think about it, this is not fantasy at all. It all took place in the possible world. In our world, it was all just a dream. However, in The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, unlike the Judy Garland movie, which everyone remembers, in the original book, uh, Dorothy does kind of wakes up, but it was made very clear that Oz does exist. That Dorothy has been gone for a while and the house was ruined or taken, flown away by a tornado. Which means that unlike Alice Adventures in Wonderland, in The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Oz does exist, which makes it really a fantasy because the book does indeed take place in the impossible world. I think it's kind of cool, right? And finally, let's look at the improbable world. Spoiler alert, this is going to be science fiction, as you could probably imagine yourself. And note that the word science is in the genre's title, but many of the science fiction books have nothing to do with science. And I've talked about it in my video about top 10 misconceptions about books, which you can uh, see. I will link it down below and also somewhere above my head. Now, as far as literary genres go, I'm much more of a fantasy kind of a person. I'm not a huge fan of science fiction. However, when it comes to talk about this genre, I think it's a lot more interesting and complex. Now, if the fantasy genre, the impossible world, is a world that could never ever exist in our reality because it has some elements that could never physically exist here, like, and I should have mentioned it before, I said magic, but also, I don't know, talking animals, dragons and mermaids and werewolves, inanimated objects that move by themselves, etc. These are part of the fantasy world, now, science fiction, the improbable world. We have a world that doesn't really exist, it's not really compatible with our reality, but theoretically, 
it could happen in the future or it could have happened if history would have changed somewhere. Remember when I was talking about the possible world, I talked about history as we know it? Well, in the improbable world, we have history, but not as we know it. But theoretically, if things have changed, then it could have happened somehow. It's not that implausible like in the fantasy genre. I will be talking more about it, but I do want to divide very crudely the science fiction into two kind of subgenres. I will not be talking a lot about subgenres here because, first of all, like I mentioned before, time, patience, but also I'm really not a good resource because, like I said, I'm not a huge science fiction fan and I don't want to talk about things that I don't know about, but I do want to very kind of generally divide science fiction into two kind of subcategories. One of them is more futuristic novel that, as you can imagine for the name, takes place somewhere in the future, whether it's the near future or far future. And the other kind is the alternate history where, as the name suggests, history have changed. These are two kind of sub-genres of the genre, but they both belong into the science fiction genre. Now, before I move on uh, and get into more details, again, some famous examples. iRobot, The Man in the High Castle, Around the World in 80 Days, The Time Machine, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, A Handmaid's Tale, and The Hunger Games trilogy. Now, a lot of people don't know that, but science fiction is actually an incredibly social genre, which is one of the things that makes it so interesting and complex. It's a lot of fun to write or read about space battles and spaceship races and such, but actually in both kind of subgenres that I just mentioned of the science fiction, the fictional society created in the book, whether they are humans or aliens or robots, whatever, they are used in order to talk about everyday problems or society's problems, but by doing them so distance, it gives us a bit of a safe distance in order to really look at them from the outside. And that's how we can talk about these issues without feeling too involved. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you're reading about a futuristic society where you have AI, that's artificial intelligence, robots everywhere. They're commonplace. Everybody is using them. They're there. We're used to them. Uh, they're very helpful to us, but they're very different. And a lot of people are afraid of them and they hate them and they won't allow AI robots to work for them or enter their house. Does that sound a little familiar? Maybe that sounds a little bit like racism, but with robots without mentioning any actual race or skin color or religion. By making the society something that is far from us, it kind of creates a safe distance for us to actually talk about these issues of discrimination. Another way in which the science fiction genre kind of have a social commentary is by depicting futuristic society where today's problems are exaggerated. For example, I personally see The Hunger Games, or at least the first one, which is the only one of them that I really liked, as a saying about our reality TV culture where it's not enough for us anymore to watch a character dies on screen. We have to watch a person dies in real life in order to get some sort of emotional response. Think about The Handmaid's Tale, which is sensational right now, even though the book was written about 30 years ago. Anyway, the grim future we see there is kind of like a cautionary tale about the way we treat women, the way we treat freedom of speech, the control of religion, etc. It's like a cautionary tale where it says to us, if we won't stop our ways, if we will continue to behave that way, we're gonna end up in Gilead, for example. So I can talk about these things forever, so let's not, let's just move on. Okay, so now that we got the basics done, I want to go over some famous books and look at what makes them a fantasy, what makes them science fiction in order to clarify a few things, to point out a few interesting things, and maybe to answer some questions that you might still have. I think that when it comes to fantasy, things look pretty simple, right? I mean, 
Lord of the Rings, for example, it has magics and wizards, it has creatures that don't really exist in our world. It completely takes place in a different world, which automatically makes it fantasy. Harry Potter, however, um, starts in our regular world, but it turns out that within our normal reality, there is magic kind of uh, hiding. I said I will not be talking about subgenres, but I do want to mention one thing that works like Lord of the Rings, for example, or the series of Song of Ice and Fire that completely takes place in their entirety in a different kind of a world are called high fantasy and uh, works like Harry Potter or Twilight or Green Mile that takes place in our reality, but within our reality we find out that magic exists and there it's usually like a surprise that it exists most of the time, then it's called low fantasy. Now I want to talk about the Bone Season series, of which I have to say I read the first three. There's supposed to be seven in the series. I only really like the first one, but that's not important right now. It takes place in a futuristic London where we have a group of people who are persecuted just because they were born differently. Our protagonist is a girl called Paige Mahoney as she's being caught by the police, sent to this very weird prison from which she tries to escape and I don't want to spoil it too much. But let's take a look at the genre. It takes place in the future, it has to do with some sort of let's call it racism or like a group that their entire crime was to be born different, kind of social. It's science fiction, right? But... Paige and her unnatural buddies, as they are known in the book, are clairvoyant. That means that they can communicate with spirits and ghosts, which make them people with magical ability, which makes the book fantasy, because it doesn't take place in the improbable world, it takes place in the impossible world. I think it's very clever. The author wrote a fantasy book, but put it in very science fiction-y, kind of a setting. I think it's very interesting and is one of those examples for books that may look like one genre but they're actually the other. Now let's move on to science fiction. A.G. Wells, Jules Verne, they all wrote books that are kind of like pure science fiction. When you usually say the word sci-fi, these are the kind of people that you're thinking about. Then there are the alternative history books and the one depicting a grim future, aka dystopian future, which is very beloved in YA series. Like I said, they're kind of like a cautionary tale. If you don't change our way, we'll end up there. There are books like Fatherland, The Man in the High Castle, The Yiddish Policeman Union and Making History all depict a world that takes place in an alternate history where World War II ended differently. Notice that World War II and the Holocaust are very popular themes here for alternate history. What would have happened if Hitler won? What would have happened if they were changed differently? It's just a very popular subject and it's not surprising considering it's such a huge impactful uh, thing that happened. On the other hand, we have books like 1984, Fahrenheit 451 and A Brave New World that all takes place in the future that even if it's not really the future that we think about, maybe they have technologies that we don't have, things that are a bit odd to us, still theoretically uh, it's not that far-fetched that they would actually happen in the future. But then there are the cases where science fiction almost becomes fantasy. It's no longer improbable, it's almost impossible. I mentioned before that science fiction is basically most of the time a future that maybe not be compatible to what we have right now, but we could believe that it might happen in the future. But what about aliens? What about such crazy future? There's no way that it would really happen. What about The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Basically, the deal with science fiction is that as long as you can explain the oddities with science, you're okay. I'm sorry that I don't know exactly how to explain it in Pavel's terms. Maybe if you do, write it down below. But technically, even crazy things like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy are still science fiction. And speaking of Hitchhiker's Guide, it's important to remember that, for example, in this case, this specifically is a very crazy uh, British comedy, very Monty Python-esque. It is not supposed to make a lot of sense, but it takes place in the future. The 
oddities and I, as I said could theoretically be explained by science, therefore science fiction. In Dune, for example, we have huge sandworms of people with glowing blue eyes, but the explanation theoretically is that it takes place on a different planet, therefore the conditions are different and the sandworms are like a natural occurrence there because they may not exist here on Earth, but on a different planet they could have. It's still explained through science, kind of. I understand that sometimes the explanation is kind of convoluted and difficult to understand and you think, okay, it's kind of scientific-ish, but it's not really science, like time travel, for example. Honestly, I really hope that will never be real i just really scared of the idea of time travel for example it, but it's still kind of you know it's scientific and therefore even though it's convoluted and you may not believe this will really actually happen it's still science fiction i hope that makes sense to you speaking of time travel uh, last point that i want to make is how interesting it is that the same tropes can exist in both science fiction and fantasy but it's the explanation to them is what makes them science fiction or fantasy i just mentioned time travel so uh, in the time machine for example uh, a man created a time machine a scientific device in order to go back in time or forward to the future therefore it's science fiction because it's a scientific device however sorry for mentioning harry potter again but anyway in the harry potter series hermione has uh, a time traveling magical device which enables her to go uh, backwards in time so here it's explained by magic so in both harry potter and the time machine we have the concept of time travel but while one of them is through technology which makes it science fiction the other is through magic and therefore it's fantasy another good example is zombies or bringing dead things back to life think about dracula one of the most famous book monsters ever he's a vampire he used to be like dead but he's you know moving and kind of alive it's through magic which makes it fantasy vampires are automatically fantasies like you know werewolves and such however let's look at another very famous classic monster frankenstein's monster it's also about a man who brings a dead thing back to life kind of but as convoluted as it might be it's a more scientific approach it can be explained by science kind of sorta therefore while dracula is fantasy frankenstein is science fiction another cool example is anne mccaffrey's world of pern it has dragons in it it sets in a kind of like a medievalish sort of a world automatically fantasy right but if you read the intro to the book Dragonflight, which I've read, and quite coincidentally, my husband, who's a huge Anne McCaffrey fan, uh, didn't read. If you do read the intro, you will find out that this story actually takes place in the future, many years from now, after mankind had explored the stars and settled on a distant planet, where quite naturally uh, a type of animal developed there that didn't exist on earth because you know different planets different conditions and this new animal looked so much like the earth mythological creature dragon so the inhabitants of this planet decide to call this animal a dragon even though it's not a mythological creature it's just you know it's called a dragon like i said the dragons are fantasy but we do have dragons on earth we have the komodo dragon who's called a dragon, but it's not like the mythological dragon. I'm kind of repeating myself. You get the point, right? So despite there being dragons and, you know, the medievalish society that just happened to be like our medieval society because it sets on a different planet, despite all that, the story, even though it really, really looks like fantasy, is actually science fiction. Well, actually, not really, because then it turns out that the dragons can move in time, which kind of still makes it a fantasy, but I wanted to make the point. So let's try to conclude. While reading a book and trying to figure out whether it's a fantasy or a science fiction, take a look at the world in which the story takes place. If it has magic in it, if it has things that would never ever could existed in this reality 
then it's fantasy. If the world of the book isn't really compatible to our reality, but theoretically, just theoretically, could exist in the future or could have existed if history would have changed, then it is science fiction. This is such an oversimplifying of everything and as you could see from just a few examples in this video, the reality is a lot more complex than that. But as I mentioned, I just want to give you the base of the base and now it's time to try to think of examples like Anne McCaffrey's world which is a lot more complex and I'm still not sure if it's really fantasy or science fiction. But like I also mentioned in the beginning, it's interesting, but it doesn't really matter. Her books are wonderful, even if I can't really put my finger on exactly what genre they belong to. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I made things a little clearer and not a lot more complicated. And I want to know what you think. First of all, do you like these sort of videos? Do you want me to talk about other things? Write it down below. Write also down below. Are you a fan of fantasy, of science fiction, of both? What book is like your absolute favorite that you have to recommend the entire world? And what kind of book surprised you? Maybe you thought something was science fiction turned to be fantasy or the other way around or what kind of book still confuses you. Maybe write up down below, maybe together uh, we can try to figure out what kind of elements it has that belong to this genre or the other genre. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did like it, please don't forget to click like, to subscribe to my channel if you dare and to share this video to the world so more people will be able to know uh, if they're reading science fiction or fantasy. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.